Hello and welcome back to another reaction video. Today I'm going to be reacting to uh, Norway, it looks like. And it's going to be why Finland has 54,000 nuclear bunkers. So let's get into this. This is one of the safest playgrounds on the planet, located 80 feet below the Finnish capital, Helsinki. It can withstand a nuclear, biological, or chemical attack and sustain up to 6,000 people for a few months at a time. Of course, this bunker is not likely to survive a direct hit. But that's besides the point, because in Helsinki alone, there are 5,500 bunkers which can accommodate a total of 900,000 people. That's more shelter space than the entire 631,000 population of the capital. That's insane. But Finland has over 54,000 nuclear bomb shelters across the country, which can protect 4.4 million people. Finland has been ranked as the happiest country in the world for the fifth year in a row by the United Nations. Who would have thought that the secret to happiness is having a bouncing castle inside a nuclear-proof bunker? But why would the happiest country in the world be preparing for such a doomsday scenario? Well, it has nothing to do with happiness, and quite the opposite. In fact, the happiest bunkers on the planet come with a really sad rule. But it's not what you think. The Merihaka shelter is one of the largest defense shelters in Finland. It is protected by two layers of one foot thick blast doors. One door to stop the blast, while the other one seals the inside air from any contaminants outside. Wow, that's During peacetime, shelters like Mirihaka serve a recreational purpose as they often have a gym, soccer field, kids' playground, and even a swimming pool. Yes, a swimming pool inside a nuclear-proof bunker. Oh, and there's lots and lots of parking, although some parts of the bunker are closed off to the public, which house the water and air filtration systems, multiple tunnels, storage bays, decontamination equipment, and so on. All the installations inside the public spaces are semi-permanent, meaning that in the event of an emergency, everything could be stripped away within 72 hours, and the bunker would assume its true function. Wow, that's insane. During an emergency, the population would be informed via radio, TV, sirens, and even a special app. People would be asked to bring food and warm clothing, Wait, so there's a special app that tells you about a nuclear disaster that's going to be happening and tell everyone to head to the bunkers? I didn't know there was a special app for that. No alcohol is allowed according to the government officials. Sheltering is not supposed to be fun. It's to keep you alive. There's no cell phone signal or it will be limited at best. But the really sad part is that no pets are allowed inside the bunker, so they would Aww. have to be left on the other side of the blast door. A cat, little kitten, is meowing to get let in. Okay, I get it, it's sad. But you're welcome to stay on the other side of the door with your pet. In total, Finland operates 44 large public shelters like Merihaka, which were built and are maintained by the government. The rest of the bunkers are private, since the law mandates that any building with a footprint larger than 13,000 square feet must have a defense shelter that will be marked by orange and blue triangles on the wall. Wait, so it must have a defense shelter if the building is a certain size? So it's like a requirement by law that you have to have a nuclear bomb shelter or just a bomb shelter of some sort. That is insane. I did, did, never knew that existed. That's why there's so many nuclear bomb shelters in Finland. Most of these private shelters are also dual purpose. They act as storage units, gyms, or saunas during peacetime, but can be quickly turned into fully functional nuclear shelters. But why does the law mandate large private dwellings to have nuclear shelters, 
which has resulted in over 54,000 bunkers across the country. You see, it's not really a nuclear World War III that Finland is worried about. It's Mother Russia. Finland shares an 830 mile border with its less than friendly neighbor. While it's not explicitly mentioned in official statements, Finland's greatest fear is invasion by Russia for a second time. In 1939, the Soviets demanded Finland to cede parts of the province of Karelia, which was Finland's southern territory near the Russian border. In exchange, the Soviets would give Finland some land somewhere else up north. Stalin believed that Finland was too close to Leningrad, which is now called St. Petersburg, and this was a great threat to the Soviet Union. Stalin wanted a 20-mile protective distance for Leningrad from the Finnish border. But when Finland refused, the Soviets labeled Finland as a fascist state and invaded the country. By all accounts, Finland was expected to lose to the superior military strength of the Soviet Union. Look at that camouflage that tank has. That's like every single inch of it's covered. Finland had 32 tanks and 100 aircraft at a time, versus 4,000 Soviet tanks and their 5,000 aircraft. Oh wow. The Soviets expected to face very little resistance and envisioned that they would simply walk in and take over the entire country with ease. The League of Nations, which was more or less the predecessor to the United Nations, called the invasion illegal and kicked the Soviet Union out of the organization. But to the Soviets' surprise, Finland's resistance ended up being catastrophic for the Soviet Union, who suffered 380,000 casualties. Meanwhile, Finland had only suffered 70,000 casualties. But three months into the war, the situation began to get incredibly dire for Finland. Their troops were exhausted. The Soviets weren't in much better shape either, but still had the upper hand. So the 105-day conflict ended with the Moscow Peace Treaty, where Finland was forced to sign a monstrous treaty, as called by the Finnish president at the time. And that comment is understandable, since Finland ended up ceding 9% of their territory to the Soviet Union, which resulted in the relocation of 450,000 Finns who lost their homes. Oh, that's awful. The official position is that Finland does not have territorial demands on Russia, but they're open to taking back the lost territories if Russia offers. Of course, the Russian position is that they will never do such a thing. It will be interesting to see if Ukraine retakes its occupied territories, including Crimea, would Finland attempt to do the same? This is known as the Karelian Question, a public debate on whether Finland should try to regain control of the territories that they lost to Russia during the Winter War. As many as 62% of Finns oppose regaining control of Karelia. Currently, the annexed regions are mostly inhabited by people who moved there from Russia, Belarus and Ukraine, and their descendants who were born there. One of the biggest reasons for not wanting Karelia back is that it would potentially mean that the 370,000 Russians who currently live there would be joining the Finnish society. Currently, about 70,000 Russians reside in Finland, which makes up about 1.3% of the population. Even prior to the Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2022, there were manifestations of intolerance toward the Russian population living in Finland, 12% of whom reported experiencing harassment by the Finns. The bunker system is only one part of the strategy. The Finnish military doctrine is based on the concept of total defense, which means that all sectors of the government and economy are involved in the defense planning. During a war, all resources will be diverted to ensure the survival of the nation. It's the law that every tunnel, overpass or bridge must be built with charge pits, where a- Whoa! They put 
blast charges underneath all of the bridges in case there's like an invasion on Finland and they blow the bridge to prevent the enemy from crossing. So they're pretty much prepared for an invasion right away so they don't even have to set it up. That's like they're pretty prepared people. Explosives could be placed to blow up the infrastructure in order to slow down the invasion of hostile forces. Highways are also strategically built so that they go through solid rock corridors every so often. This is so that these corridors could be blown up to block the highways and further delay the movement of the enemy. Ow. Furthermore, a network of small roads throughout the country are designed to be turned into runways in case airports are compromised. Finland is prepared for any just-in-case scenario. After all, they've been a battleground between Swedes and Russians for centuries. Finland's version of the total defense strategy also involves defending their capital, Helsinki, at all costs. Given Finland's large size, using all other areas of the country as a buffer zone to delay and wear down the invading forces is part of the strategy. Once the enemy forces have culminated, the Finnish forces would counterattack and defeat the opponent in the area of their choosing. If this strategy sounds familiar, it's because that's exactly what Ukraine has been doing, protecting Kiev at all costs during the initial days of the invasion by wearing down the Russian forces for several months before counterattacking and forcing them to retreat. Finns are carefully observing how the Ukraine war is unfolding. One of the lessons learned is that modern war is still far from only being precision guided. Just look at the civilian buildings getting hit and destroyed. It's awful. This greatly reinforced Finland's strategy of having thousands of bomb shelters throughout the country. Currently, Finland has one of the most capable armies in Europe. It has a wartime military strength of 280,000. By law, all men must complete national military service, which translates to one-seventh of the country's population, making up the reserve force of about 700,000 people. Wow. Moreover, Finland has the largest artillery capability in Western Europe, with an arsenal of 700 howitzers, 700 heavy mortars, and 100 multiple rocket launchers. After the collapse of the Soviet Union in the early 1990s, while many European countries were decreasing their military spending, Finland kept it high. Just recently, Finland ordered 64 F-35 fighter jets for a total cost of $10 billion. In 2022, Finland spent about 2% of its GDP on their military, something that most NATO members struggle to do. Speaking of NATO, Finland was a neutral country for decades. In fact, its official policy was to stay away from any European-Russian affairs. Finland has been preparing to fight Russia alone if needed. On the other side of the border, one of Russia's justifications for invading Ukraine was to prevent the expansion of NATO. But it looks like that one may have backfired because with the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Finland quickly pivoted and is currently in the process of joining the NATO alliance. Alright, it's over. So, yes, Finland is now part of NATO. And now Finland's protected. They seem pretty prepared people too. Their military, so all men has to serve for probably a certain period of time and do training at least to be in the military. Um, also, most of those become reserve forces. So, I didn't know that they could use the runway, like the roads as runways, 
they have like certain des like places around Finland, which is really unique, cause like what if Russia or some other country targeted their airport or runways? They always have a backup plan. Finland has like a backup plan for everything. There's probably a backup plan for that backup plan. But it's like top secret. Um, but blowing up the bridges, blowing up the roads, like causing landslides in certain areas, they're prepared to slow down an invasion no matter what. They probably even have things that weren't even mentioned in this video that makes them even more prepared. They even have those nuclear bunkers. Like, over 50,000? That is insane. And you have to have it, a nuclear bunker in a building of a certain size as well. So, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you're from Finland or any other people from any other niche nation around the world. Remember... Peace to all, and have a wonderful rest of your year, day or week, or month.